so gamification was a trend and a hype that I was always a bit skeptical about and I'm not the only one. And the reason is that in many of those uh, early initiatives it didn't necessarily take took the depth of games, it only took the external surface elements, you know, like uh, scores and points and rewards, but games are much more than that. And I think that there's much more uh, uh, potential in making very real deep games that have a message or that are trying to uh, convey um, even a commercial agenda, a marketing agenda, than just taking the you know, outside layer and stick it on top of something else. So I think that uh, we'll just, we just need to get better at that. And I think we'll see much more on that also with VR now, uh, much more interesting approaches. Yeah, so there are uh, three trends that I also talked about in my presentation. One is uh, neuroscience games, the idea that games uh, or VR experiences can be as powerful as medicine. It sounds a bit of science fiction, but some of those early games are already going for approval by uh, the FDA in the US and getting um, basically the permission to get this game into the hands of patients having a doctor prescribe a game instead of pills. Um, there are games like this for dementia, for uh, ADHD, depression, stress, uh, and it's going to be a huge industry if it succeeds. The second one is VR AR. I think that we're just at the very beginning of what VR and uh, augmented reality can do. It's going to bring a whole different level of immersiveness and social play that uh, Pokemon Go was just, you know, uh, one hint, one clue. And the last one is eSports that I really like. The idea that people play <clears throat> video games competitively and uh, it's becoming a huge phenomena where gamers go into a huge arena to watch their favorite players. And they say that uh, in some surveys that millennials are now watching eSports as much as they watch traditional sports and um, it's only going to go up from there. So think about Games for Change as uh, the Sundance of video games. You know, it's a place that every year 1,000 people come together from gaming, government, NGOs, universities, museums, and they all focus on how to use the media of video games, this engaging media, for good. And the idea when you make a game for impact or for good is that you need on one end to make the experience very engaging but you only also need to um, get some takeaway out of the game that is beyond entertainment it could be um, just like a documentary uh, it could be uh, like a non-fiction book it could be uh, like a news story and um, people are trying very innovative things and um, one of the things that games have is the idea that you role play, that I can take you actually to see a different perspective and enter the shoes of someone that is very different from you. And this is one of the most powerful things about Games for Change. So in Peacemaker, uh, when we created it, we decided to make two games. One is the Israeli side and the other one is the Palestinian side. And whether you play the Israeli leader or the Palestinian leader, you have very different objectives. But trust is at the center of what you need to do. Because if you cannot build trust with the other side, there's no way you're going to win the game. And you do it slowly, step by step. And many, many factors are working against you. People don't believe you. People don't uh, see your intentions as good or naive. And um, sometimes you need to face very strong opposition in order to be successful. But once you establish trust, the momentum is yours and you can actually feel how uh, everyone is starting to walk with you towards a peaceful solution.